Welcome back to Recap. QQ here and Johnny D manning the cameras. What a week. Uh, things got a little bit bonkers. Let's start with the Deep Freeze ad campaign. So we've struck a blow to Gawker, Vox Media, and friends. They're having trouble getting dedicated advertisers, so they're resorting to AdSense. Hey, AdSense. Anyone can buy ads on AdSense, can't they? So the board owner of V on 8chan, Mark Mann, started a GoFundMe campaign to run ads during E3. The ads will be for DeepFreeze.it, a catalog of journalistic impropriety, and will run on lots of gaming and technology sites, including Ars Technica, PC Gamer, Giant Bomb, Game Ranks, Destructoid, NeoGaf, Rock Paper Shotgun, and Kotaku. The campaign was asking for $2,000, and it didn't look like it was going to meet its goal in time for E3 until Dennis Dyack to the rescue with $607, pushing it right over its limit. Holy shit, Dyack. Thanks, man. Full disclosure, Johnny D made some of the banners that are going to be used in the campaign. This, of course, is going to bias the two of us towards thinking that this ad campaign is fucking awesome. Bone Golem, the administrator and creator of Deep Freeze, was not involved in this campaign other than giving it the okay to proceed, and the campaign is not formally affiliated with Deep Freeze. I think that this sort of campaign is a great idea, and it's much more useful than some of the other funding campaigns that the consumers participating in the revolt have engaged in, and the reaction to it is likely to be just as hilarious. If I were you, I'd keep my eyes open for more campaigns like this in the future, and toss some of your entertainment budget its way. It's bound to generate some comedy gold. Another ethics policy was published, this time on... Wait for it... Game Ranks! Yeah, that's right, Ian Miles Chung's site. Reading through this new ethics policy, it's actually pretty decent. It addresses anonymous sources in a manner that would have helped prevent the animosity between Dayak and Kotaku had Kotaku had a similar policy at the time. It instructs writers to dive down to the very original source when citing things in their article, which prevents the game of telephone that sometimes occurs when news sites just all cite each other. It discourages taking out-of-context information from social media. It requires that opinion pieces are clearly labeled. It requires disclosure of personal relationships and paid travel expenses. It outright demands that a writer recuse themselves from writing about companies that they've worked for or that a family member is working for. The only weakness that I could find is that if a journalist contributes to a funding campaign for a game, that they are encouraged but not required to disclose that. However, such contributions are limited to the minimum amount required to acquire the game. The other way around, a publisher or developer paying a journalist does appear to require disclosure, however. In the footer, it recommends that their journalists consult the SPJ Code of Ethics if they're in doubt. It's a nice touch, but it almost sounds like he's pandering to us. Overall, this is a huge step in the right direction. As long as Game Ranks actually follows these policies, he's essentially meeting my demands. Of course, the only way we can ensure is to be vigilant watchdogs, as always. I do keep hearing people say that Ian is only doing this for personal gain, but frankly, as long as him and his publications are acting properly, I'm not going to be concerned about his personal motivations. Another AirPlay update. These things seem to be coming out weekly now. So, another one of the panelists representing the SPJ at AirPlay was announced. Ren Laforme. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. He's an instructor with the prestigious Pointer Institute, which I also hope that I'm pronouncing right. It's a school that specializes in journalism. Ren Laforme was quoted in the AirPlay update as saying, quote, The gaming journalism industry has been riddled with ethical violations for almost as long as it has been around. However, I'm generally skeptical of the Gamergate movement and some of the ugliness that has come out of it, but there's some common ground to reach on some of the issues that they've brought up, end quote. Really, that's all that we ask for. A chance to discuss, the chance to reach common ground. And compared to what's been said about us before, hey, I'll take skepticism any day. So Reddit has been making a lot of noise lately about quote-unquote harassment on its platform. Reddit defines harassment as, well, actually, I couldn't find any definition at all. Harassment appears to be whatever the administrative staff doesn't like. We know this because this week, the Reddit administration brought the ban hammer down. Five subreddits were banned. Content warning, I'm going to have to be a potty mouth and use racial slurs. The five subreddits were trans fags, shit niggers say, Ham Planet Hatred, 
fat people hate, and Neofag. Wait, one of these things is not like the others. One of these things doesn't belong. But before we get into that, I should clarify my opinion on free speech on the internet. It's pretty simple, really. Yes, I understand that private forums have the right to police the speech on their platform. I just think that they should do it as little as possible. Yes, most of these subreddits were dedicated to making fun of people. Trans people, black people, and fat people. And sometimes in cruel or mean-spirited ways. But while I would never participate in this kind of speech, and find some of it, quite frankly, to be gross and disturbing, I don't want it censored because of how icky I find it. Yes, Reddit has a right to remove it. Any private platform does. The problem is, is that most of the internet, short of the ICANN itself, is privately owned. So if you don't think that private platforms should be free speech platforms, you essentially stand against free speech on the internet as a whole. And that's something that I can't get behind. The way to fight mean or bigoted speech is with your own speech to counter it, not by pretending that these people don't exist and preventing them from talking about it. So while Reddit does have the right to remove these subreddits, I also have the right to complain loudly about how they're applying their rules inconsistently, about how they're breaking their original promise of being a free speech platform, and about the approach that they're taking. While there's no legal right to free speech on Reddit, I can speak up in favor of the principle of free speech. And I don't think I'm the only one who feels this way. After the ban hammer fell, there was such a massive exodus to Reddit competitor Vote that the site was hugged to death and is still having troubles with speed and availability. And of course, the Daily Dot couldn't resist writing a very biased clickbait piece on this exodus. So the banned subreddits were on a sliding scale of offense in this. One that's not like the others is Neofag. Despite the offensive name, it was about making fun of the online gaming forum NeoGAF. Which is, I mean, almost a natural thing to do at this point. NeoGAF is turning into a circle jerk where you can get banned for disagreeing with any little bit of forum dogma. Now, I wasn't a member of NeoGAF or of NeoFag, but so far all of the justifications that I've heard for banning this subreddit have been shaky at best. The rumor I heard is that they had some photos of NeoGAF members in their header and that this might have contained a picture of a minor, which is against Reddit's rules. This is unconfirmed at this point, and it could have been solved with a message to the moderators instead of the ban hammer. So the problems with Reddit doing this are threefold. First, it's going against the original principles of Reddit as a free speech platform. Second, the rules under which things are being banned are vague at best and Orwellian at worst and could be broadly applied in the future. And third, the application of these new rules is inconsistent. So what do I mean when I say Orwellian? Well, just look at the language they use. This subreddit has been banned for violating the Reddit rules to keep everyone safe. This is implying that speech alone can make someone unsafe. I mean, maybe I could understand this language if it was some Bahamut-style doxing board or something, but even fat people hate had rules against having any personal information whatsoever. And really, how is a subreddit about making fun of NeoGAF creating any safety issues whatsoever? By using this language of keeping people safe, they're implying that these acts of speech are acts of violence, which is a classic tactic used to justify censorship. To me, it seems that maybe they're ramping up the rhetoric to try and make it acceptable to ban a certain other subreddit about the gaming industry, and that the deletion of Neofag was to remove a place that the users might try and retreat to. Just a paranoid suspicion. And as for how inconsistent it is, Coontown still exists, which is just as incredibly intolerant as any of the subreddits that were banned. And as for the claim that it's about behavior and not content, Shit Reddit said just made a new rule requiring that people link directly to their targets and reminding people that it's A-OK -okay to comment on them, as if to rub SRS's immunity in everyone's face. The issue is, under these unstated harassment rules, who knows what kind of subreddits will be banned next? I mean, following unprinted and inconsistently applied rules is just not possible. Essentially, allowing this extent of administrator discretion will make Reddit an unsafe platform for controversial speech. And that leads us to how this becomes relevant to Gamergate. Some denizens of Gamergazi noticed this inconsistent application of rules and saw it as a chance to run Gamergate off their site. They wrote an open letter to the administration and called Kotaku in Action, a subreddit created specifically to harass certain women out of gaming. Yeah, they repeated that tired old bullshit. Now... To give Ghazi some credit, they did try to link to evidence, and failed horribly as another Reddit user whose name I can't pronounce tore their evidence to shreds. I'll link their analysis in the description. 
Kotaku in action has become a haven for people upset with the administrative staff, as the mod cabal on the other subreddits appears to be doing its best to shut down any discussion of it. Kotaku in action's user count has rocketed past 40k users and is still growing at an accelerated pace. So what if the Reddit admins do go after Kotaku in action? Well, The Hat 2 has drawn up an emergency plan about where to migrate to. I'll link it in the description. And that's all for this week. Thanks for joining us and have fun out there. Remember, take breaks for Vidya between all the dramatics. Ciao.